guys, it's Mrs. Beggs, and I am here today to read the story, um, Evelyn the Adventurous Entomologist, uh, the true story of a world traveling bug hunter. This particular book is by Christine Evans. Back in 1881, when Evelyn Cheeseman was born, most people thought girls should be quiet, clean, and covered with lace. And little Victorian girls definitely weren't supposed to go on bug hunts. But Evelyn went anyway. She explored forests and splashed in ponds with her brothers and sister. She crawled in mud and stuffed her pockets with bugs. Jars of glowworms sparkled while she dreamed about the world beyond her small English home. Many years later, Evelyn applied to veterinary college. She longed to help sick animals. However, it was the early 1900s. Women couldn't vote. They rarely went to college and they certainly weren't allowed to be vets. So she did the next best thing and trained as a canine nurse, hoping the veterinary college would open to women after a few years. Evelyn cared for sick greyhounds, bulldogs, and terriers. She fed the dogs, took their temperatures, and gave them medicine. But in her heart, she still wanted to be a vet. One day, Evelyn's friend, Grace, wrote that her cousin, Professor Lefroy, was desperate for someone to run London Zoo's insect house. A woman had never been in charge of the insect house before, but Evelyn went anyway. A single beetle paddled in a giant tank, but the rest of the insect house echoed. It had been neglected while zookeepers, along with millions of other men, served in the First World War. Evelyn agreed to give the job a try. She scooped insects from London's ponds and streams. She asked local children to find caterpillars, beetles, and snails to star in her exhibits. She studied entomology, exploring insect books for wonders to share. After a few weeks of bug hunting, the tanks were full and so was Evelyn's heart. In the insect house, Evelyn spun stories for curious visitors. She showed them tiny ants carrying pine needles to build their homes, a water snail crawling up glass with its muscular foot, and butterflies sipping nectar. Crowds swarmed the insect house to watch. Evelyn's bugs creep and slide and scurry. Evelyn still dreamed about places beyond her small world, but now she also dreamed about insects never studied and about stories untold. Even when the veterinary college opened its doors to women at last, 
Evelyn knew she never wanted to leave the world of insects. In 1924, she heard about an expedition to study tropical insects. In those days, women scientists and explorers were rare. People thought it wasn't safe. Women should be at home. But Evelyn went anyway. After traveling on a rolling ocean for over 5,000 miles, Evelyn explored the Pacific Islands from sunrise to sunset. She chased centipedes, caught butterflies, and stalked giant land snails. On the island of Gargona, Evelyn stumbled into a sticky curtain of spider webs. As the spiders watched, she bit and pulled and kicked the threads, but there was no escape. Then Evelyn remembered the metal nail file in her pocket. She hacked each sticky strand one by one and emerged from her cocoon. On the island of Nuku Hiva, Evelyn wanted to scale a steep cliff that she was sure would reveal some interesting insects. The villagers told Evelyn that only one man had ever climbed it. They told her not to go. But Evelyn went anyway. After hours of climbing, Evelyn was rewarded with buzzing bees and wasps, beetles and grasshoppers. However, she soon realized she'd made a terrible mistake. She'd forgotten the fresh limes she planned to squeeze and drink. And Evelyn hunted for a stream. I'm sorry, as Evelyn hunted for a stream, she slipped she grasped at plants as she kept tumbling. Until she clung to a bush and stopped. All alone, Evelyn had to save herself. She inched slowly up the cliff like a caterpillar. Evelyn had survived another adventure and her backpack Full of insects had survived too. Evelyn kept traveling and studying insects. In 1925, she sailed to Tahiti where she discovered a new species of grasshopper. In 1934, she explored New Guinea and found a new species of beetle. In 1938, she found a new blue orchid on top of an extinct volcano in Waigio. And in 1955, the Queen of England awarded Evelyn an OBE officer of the most excellent order of the British Empire for her services to science. Evelyn never stopped working, even after her hair turned white and her body ached. For nearly 30 years, this adventurous entomologist climbed mountains, explored jungles, and collected insects. Then she spun her stories into books, inspiring others to be like Evelyn and go anyway. Okay, that is the end. Guys, I hope that you find what you're passionate about and go towards it. 
go anyway, despite what people say. See you later. Bye-bye.